This video is intended to show administrative staff how to properly add staff within MPA Works. Once logged into your organization's database, the system will default to your client view. To add a new staff member, highlight staff on the left-hand side and select Create New Entity in the top left. The staff information window will appear and default to the General tab. You can begin by adding the staff member's first and last name, address, city, state, zip code, county, email, web address if available, and here you have four different fields for phone numbers. Please keep in mind that the phone number fields will hold letters and numbers should you need to use this as a note field. Any staff who has an MPI number should have their number added to their staff profile. To add the MPI number to the staff profile, click the icon after the last name. This is considered your special identifiers icon. Once the screen opens, click the add icon in the top left of the screen and a new line will be added. Under type, click in the middle of the box to activate the dropdown. Select NPI from the dropdown and scroll over to the number ID field. Here is where you will enter the MPI number and click private and rendering provider to make the selection active. Once complete, click save and this will store the staff member's MPI properly for future use. Every new staff member will default to active and the active checkbox will be checked. Select the pay type from the drop down box indicating whether this employee is hourly, salaried, contracted, or other, and then enter the employee's hire date. Moving down, you will select from the drop down if in fact the employee is full time or part time, and next you can indicate how many hours this employee desires to work on a weekly basis. Should you not know at that time, the system will allow you to store the negative one default. Select if in fact this employee is overtime exempt and if there is a phone extension for this employee, you can enter that here. In the residency drop down, choose whether the employee is a U.S. citizen or has a green card or I-9 status. Enter the status date or issue date of the driver's license here and below, you can enter the driver's license number and expiration date. Keep in mind these fields are not required and can be left blank should you not have this information readily available. Select the job title from the drop down box as well as the department in which this staff member works in. Here you can select the supervisor of this employee or leave this field blank should they not have a supervisor as of yet. From the drop down box select whether the staff member is male or female and here you can enter their social security number and date of birth. Should you not have the date of birth and or social security number at the time, you can leave these fields blank and move forward. In the box to the right, you will see all the services your company provides. Should the staff member being entered provide services, you will need to click the therapist service provider box at the top to activate the screen here. If your organization has signed up for RBT tracking, you will see a provides and requires checkbox. If this particular staff member can provide RBT supervision, simply click the Provides box. If in fact this staff member requires RBT supervision, then click the Requires box here. Should you not know which boxes to select, simply leave the boxes blank and come back to them once you have the details. If you do not see the Requires Provides box at all, your organization is not utilizing this particular feature. Once you have indicated that this staff member is a service provider, it's very important to select all the services that he or she can provide. If a service is missed, the staff member will not be able to schedule appointments properly. The badge ID field below is optional. You can leave it set to generate and the system will automatically assign an employee number to each staff member once you hit save. After you have completed the General tab, you can now move to the Qualifications tab at the top of the Staff Information screen. The Qualifications tab is where you will be entering this staff member's education and any credentials they may hold. As a rule of thumb, you will only need to add the highest level of education as the system knows which education levels are higher than others. To add your qualifications, click the Add icon in the top right. The Select Credential screen will appear and here you can select one at a time or hold the control key and select multiple credentials and then select OK. 
your selections will appear in the credentials box and the issue date will auto-populate today's date. Simply go to each credentials issue date and update the information to the correct data. Add an expiration date if necessary, add your license or certification number, and should you need to add any notes regarding that proper credential, you can do so here. Should you need to remove a credential, simply click the delete icon to remove the selected listing. The funding source requirements box here in the middle can be skipped as nothing is needed. This box simply indicates which funding sources you have selected that require special credentials to provide services. Moving down to the clearances, enter your TB cleared and expiration date as well as your DOJ and FBI clearance and expiration dates. Should your state not require TB test, simply enter the employee's hire date to keep the system from sending you prompts for missing data. Once you have added all of your data to the Qualifications tab, you can now move to the Pay Codes tab at the top of the Staff Information screen. Here on the Pay Codes tab, you will be entering the staff member's hourly or salary pay. To begin, click the Add icon at the top left and your Pay Codes window will appear. Here you will see all the pay codes for your organization. You can simply click one pay code for this employee, or should you need to select multiple pay codes, hold the control key and select the multiple pay codes needed. Next, hit OK and the selected pay codes will appear in your pay codes window. Leave the external coding field blank and move to the effective date column. Here you will need to update each pay code with the date in which it became effective. Under the dollar hourly rate column, enter the rate the employee is paid per hour. Should they be a salaried employee, leave the default as .01. Next, scroll over to the mileage column. Should your organization reimburse for travel mileage, enter that rate here. If the mileage reimbursement does not apply, simply again leave the default as .01. Lastly, you will need to select which rate is the default service rate and which rate is your default non-service rate. Should you only have one pay code listed, this pay code will be both default and non-default service rate. For clarification, your default service rate is the pay code that will be selected whenever you create a service appointment. Depending on your security permissions, the pay code can be updated after the appointment has been created. Your non-service default service rate is the pay code that will be selected whenever you create a non-service appointment. Depending on your security permission, the pay code can be updated after the appointment is created. Once you have made the determination and added your pay codes, you can save your records here by selecting OK at the bottom right of the screen, or should you need to upload documents to the staff member, you can click the Notes and Issues tab on the top of the staff information screen. The Notes and Issues tab serves as your electronic filing cabinet for this staff member. Any document that needs to be added to this staff profile can be scanned and uploaded. To add a note to the staff profile, simply click the Add icon. Select the appropriate note type from the drop-down menu. This field is customizable, so should you need to add a listing, please contact your administrative staff. Should this note be time sensitive, you can add an expiration date, and should you need the system to give you a warning, you can click the Give Warning box and you will receive a visual warning on the main screen prior to this date alerting you of the expiration. In the Summary box, type a brief description of the added note, and in the Main Text box, you can enter more detailed information. Should you want to add an attachment, click the Add icon and browse your computer for the document. Select the document to be attached and click Open. The selected document will appear as a listed attachment on the Notes and Issues tab. Simply click on the blue link to view the document. Once you have added all the necessary notes, hit Save in the bottom right to save the entire staff record and return you back to the main screen. Should you have any further questions regarding adding staff to your database, please feel free to contact our support team at 877-796-9883, option 1, or via email at support at codemetro.com.